Carnation Evaporated Milk presents a star, Mr. Edmund Gwen, on Stars Over Hollywood. As the author, Charles Dickens, he says, Tonight I'm going to write my very best story. It's about... about Christmas. And as the character Scrooge, he says, Christmas, bah. Poor excuse for picking a man's pocket every 25th of December. From Hollywood, California, where the world's favorite stars live and work, the world's favorite evaporated milk brings you stars over Hollywood. Each week, Carnation presents another famous name for motion pictures, television, and radio. Such distinguished performers as David Niven, Virginia Mayo, Rock Hudson. Today's star, Edmund Gwen, may currently be seen in the filmmaker's production, The Bigamist. Today's story, A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens, was transcribed in Hollywood for Carnation. The milk from contented cows. Ladies, when you buy milk, buy wonderful carnation evaporated milk. No other form of milk is so good in so many ways. Carnation. Carnation for cooking. Carnation for coffee. Carnation for baby feeding. Carnation is good whole country fresh cow's milk, concentrated to more than double richness through evaporation. Nothing is removed but water, nothing added but vitamin D. For your coffee, cooking, baby feeding, buy economical Carnation evaporated milk, the all-purpose milk, the milk from contented cows. And be sure to hear Carnation's home service director, Mary Blake, right after the first act of today's story. She'll have worthwhile suggestions for you on that all-important subject... Better cooking at lower cost. And now, Act One of A Christmas Carol, starring Edmund Gwen in the dual role of Charles Dickens and Scrooge. Curtain going up. Scene is old London town on a bleak, cold December evening in the year 1843. Seated behind a table in a drab, cheerless, unheated room is a worried looking man. He frowns as he scribbles laboriously with a scratchy pen, carefully putting words down on the paper spread before him. A Christmas Carol in prose, being a ghost story of Christmas. Mr. Dickens! Oh. Mr. Dickens! Oh, the thing to do is simply not answer it. Perhaps it'll go away. No good pretending you're not there. I saw you come in. Oh, dear. I suppose I may as well face it. <clears throat> Mr. Dickens! Oh, so you finally decided to answer me. Good evening, Mrs. Bumblethurst. Won't you come in? No good turning your charms with words on me. Mr. Dickens will come for me rent. I mean, to have me rent, and I ain't leaving this room until I ask. Well, Mrs. Bumblethurst... As you are no doubt aware at the moment, I seem to be temporarily, uh, <clears throat> financially embarrassed. Uh, it's no concern of mine. Come for me, rent and... I'm terribly sorry, Mrs. Bumblethurst, but I promise you'll have your rent. Uh, you've said that before. Well, now, this time, there's no doubt of it. You see, tonight, I'm going to write a story that I hope will turn out to be my... my very best story. <laughs> What's it about? About, well, it's about Christmas. Yes, that'd be the best way to describe it. It's a Christmas story. It seems to me... That it ought to start... Now, let's see. Marley was dead to begin with. There was no doubt whatever about that. Old Marley was dead as a doornail, and Scrooge knew it. How could it be otherwise? Marley and Scrooge had been partners for I don't know how many years. Scrooge, a squeezing, wrenching, grasping, scraping, clutching, covered as old sinner... And once upon a time, of all the good days in the year, old Scrooge sat busy in his counting house. He was counting his money and keeping one eye on his clerk, Bob Cratchit. When the door opened and Scrooge's nephew, Fred, came in. A Merry Christmas, Uncle. God save you. Oh, humbug. Uncle. Nephew. <laughs> keep Christmas in your own way and let me keep it in mine. But you don't keep it. Well, let me leave it alone, then. Psh. Good 
that it's ever done you. Well, there are many things, Uncle, from which I might have derived good, but by which I have not profited, I dare say. And Christmas is one of them. Therefore, Uncle, though it has never put a scrap of gold or silver in my pocket, I believe that it has done me good and will do me good. And I say, God bless it. Uh-huh. Who's that? Can you clutch it? Uh, yes, sir. Excuse me, sir. Another sound from you and you'll keep Christmas by losing your situation. Oh, don't be angry, Uncle. Join us for dinner tomorrow. Why? Because it's Christmas and we'd like you to spend it with us. Christmas. Blah. Humbug. <laughs> Scrooge dismissed his nephew curtly and refused the invitation. The door had no sooner closed than Scrooge turned his attention to his clerk, Cratchit. And as the closing hour had arrived, he called him into his office. Hmm. Yeah, you will want all day off tomorrow, I suppose. If... if it's quite convenient, sir. Well, it's not convenient. <clears throat> and it's not fair. Poor excuse for picking a man's pocket every 25th of December. Uh. Oh, I suppose you must have the whole day. Hmm. But be here all the early next morning, though. Scrooge closed the office and walked to his chambers. He opened the door and went in. Then he lit a candle and looked everywhere. Sitting room, bedroom, under the table, the sofa, and the closet. Quite satisfied, he closed his door, locked himself in, put on his dressing gown and slippers and sat down before the fire. Suddenly, he, he heard a clanking noise deep down below, as if as if some person were dragging a heavy chain behind him. But the chains came closer, and squinting into the dimly lit shadows, Scrooge beheld an apparition. He immediately recognized. Ebenezer! Ebenezer Scrooge! Marley! Jacob Marley's ghost. What? What do you want with me? Much. Who? Who are you? Ask me who I was. Well, who were you then? In life, I was your partner, hmm? Jacob Marley. Uh, I don't believe it. It's humbug. Humbug, I tell you. Oh, oh no, 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 mercy. Mercy, dreadful apparition. I... Do you believe in me? I do. I do. I, I must. But why? Why do spirits walk the earth and, uh, and why do you come to me? It is required of every man that the spirit within him should walk abroad among his fellow men and travel far and wide. Oh. And if that spirit goes not forth in life, it is condemned to do so after death. It is doomed to wander through the world and witness what it cannot share, but might have shared on earth and turn to happiness. Oh! oh you, you are fettered. Why? I wear the chain I forged in life. Oh. I made it link by link and yard by yard, and of my own free will I wore it. Is its pattern strange to you? Me? Or would you know the weight and length of the strong chain you wear yourself? I? It was full as heavy and as long as this seven Christmas Eves ago. Oh. And you have labored on it since. Oh, oh yours oh. is a ponderous chain. Oh, Jacob. Good Jacob. Speak. Comfort to me, Jacob. I am here tonight to warn you that you may yet have a chance oh. and hope of escaping my fate. Oh, you, you were always a good friend to me. Thank you, Jacob. Thank you, thank you. You will be haunted by three spirits. Huh? Oh, I'd rather not if you don't mind. Without their visit, you cannot hope to shun the path I tread. Oh? Expect the first tomorrow when the bell tolls one. One? The second on the next night at the same hour. Oh. The third upon the next night when the last stroke of twelve has ceased to vibrate. Farewell, Ebenezer. Farewell. With these words, the apparition walked backward and faded through the door. Scrooge examined it. It was still, firmly locked. He tried to say, ah, but the word caught in his throat. 
So without undressing, he went straight to bed and fell fast asleep. And so the curtain falls on the first act of today's radio presentation of Dickens' A Christmas Carol, starring Academy Award winner Edmund Gwynn, and brought to you by Carnation Evaporated Milk. Before we return to the second act, let's meet Carnation's home service director, Mary Blake, who keeps us so well posted on foods and cooking. Mary, what's the good word for the Christmas season on the subject of better cooking? The word is Carnation, Art. This season and all through the year... Because when you cook with carnation evaporated milk, you can count on good results. I know that. And I know, too, that no matter what the season may be, you're never at a loss for all sorts of exciting ideas to make those good results even better. Savory entrees, delicious desserts, and always with economy. Well, if my suggestions are helpful, then I'm happy. Sometimes our you men don't realize what a job it is to come up with interesting, appetizing meals day after day and stay inside that family budget. And that's where you come in, and where carnation milk comes in, too. Yes, because so many of those meals involve the use of milk or cream. That's why I always recommend wider use of carnation evaporated milk. No other form of milk has so many uses as carnation. In every recipe that calls for milk, simply use carnation mixed with an equal amount of water. As cream for coffee and soups, on cereals and fruits, in desserts, in fact, for almost every cream purpose, use carnation just as it pours from the can. And especially during this holiday season, keep in mind that carnation is perfect for whipped toppings, too, for pastries, cakes, puddings, and all sorts of festive desserts. You'll find that week-in and week-out use of carnation evaporated milk can cut your milk and cream bills by one-third. Ladies, follow Mary Blake's advice. Enjoy the benefits of carnation's superior cooking qualities in your home. You'll have tastier, more enticing meals at lower cost with Carnation, the world's favorite brand of evaporated milk, the milk that whips. We return now to the second act of A Christmas Carol, starring Edmund Gwen in the dual role of Charles Dickens and Scrooge. When Scrooge awoke, he was aware of a clock in a neighboring church striking the quarter. So he listened for the hour. Finally, it struck. One o'clock. Oh, but that's impossible, Scrooge thought. It had been after two when he went to bed. Could he have slept clear round the clock? As he was speculating on this turn of events, there was a sudden burst of light. The curtains of his bed were drawn aside and... And there stood a strange figure. Like a child, its hair was long and white with age, yet its skin had not a wrinkle in it. And somehow Scrooge knew that this was the first of the spirits of whom Marley had spoken. Are you... Are you the spirit, sir? Whose coming was foretold to me? I am... Well... Who are you? I am the ghost of Christmas past. Your past. Huh? Rise and walk with me. As the words were spoken, Scrooge and the spirit passed through the window and stood upon an open country road. All had vanished, and with it the darkness, for it was now a cold, clear winter day. Is this place familiar to you, Ebenezer? Uh, well, I was reared in this place. I, I was born here. Strange to have forgotten it for so many years. Let us go on. They walked along the road of Scrooge's childhood, recalling every gate and post and tree and incident. Tarry not here, Ebenezer. There is much to see and the time grows short. Let us pay a visit now to old Fezziwig. Fezziwig? Why, I was apprenticed to him. I remember... Oh, uh, Ebenezer, Dick, no more work tonight. It's Christmas Eve. Clear the way, my lads. Let's have lots of room here. We're going to have a party for everyone. Oh, 
what a good man. What a fine man. How happy he made us that day. A small matter. Oh, how can you say that? He was a kind, wonderful employer, a generous... What is it, Ebenezer? What's the matter? Nothing. Nothing. I should just like to be able to say a word or two to my clerk just now, that's all. That's enough, I think. Come, our time is up. I must conduct you home. The next moment, Scrooge found himself back in his bed. And to his complete surprise, the clock was again striking. There was another flash of brilliant light, and the whole room underwent a transformation. The walls and ceiling were suddenly hung with living green. Heaped upon the floor to form a kind of throne were turkeys, geese, game, poultry, great joints of meat, suckling pigs, long wreaths of sausages, mince pies, plum puddings, barrels of oysters, red hot chestnuts, cherry cheeked apples, juicy oranges, immense cake, and seething bowls of punch that made the chamber dim with their delicious steam. In easy state upon this throne there sat a jolly giant roaring with laughter like old St. Nicholas himself. <laughs> Come in, Ebenezer, and know me better, man. I am the ghost of Christmas present. Look upon me. You have never seen the like of me before, have you? No, never. But, but if you have anything to teach me, let me profit by it. Good. Touch my robe. There now. Away we go. Scrooge did as he was told and held fast. Soon he and the second spirit stood outside the humble home of Scrooge's clerk, Bob Cratchit. The family was gathered around the table, and although there was very little to eat, everyone was smiling and laughing and seemed to be having a wonderful time. <laughs> there now, is everyone here? Yes, sir. And are you comfortable, Tiny Tim? Oh, yes, Father. Thank you. As comfortable as can be expected, I suppose. But come, this is a joyous occasion. Let us all raise our glasses and drink a toast. A Merry Christmas to us all. And God bless us, everyone. Tell me. Tell me if the little crippled boy, Tiny Tim, will live? I see a vacant seat in the poor chimney corner and a crutch without an owner, carefully preserved. <sighs> If these shadows remain unaltered by the future, the child shall die. No, no, no. No kind spirit say, say he will be spared. If these shadows remain unaltered by the future, the child will die. But what can I do? How can I alter the future? It is in your power. Me? More than you may think. I... Oh. The clock sounds the hour of twelve. It is time for your next and final journey. The pleasant ghost of Christmas present vanished on the moonbeam, and in its place stood a horrible phantom, draped and hooded. Oh, oh you, you are the spirit of Christmas yet to come. But although Scrooge spoke to the phantom, the spirit answered not. His replies were only eerie sounds in the night. And he pointed into the blackness with a bony finger. You, you are about to show me shadows of the things that have not happened, but will happen in the time before us. I fear you more than any specter I've seen. The night is waning fast, and it is precious time to me, I know. Leon, Leon! Scrooge followed the directions of the phantom's pointing finger, and a strange scene unfolded before his eyes. He found himself in a graveyard, walled in by houses, overrun by grass and weeds, the growth of vegetation's death, not life choked up with too much burying. The spirit pointed to a stone and to the name etched upon it. 
and Scrooge walked forward and read the inscription. Hey, E, B, E, N, M, and... Oh, no, no, no. No, no, Spirit, hear me. I'm not the man I was. I will not be the man I would have been, but for what I have learned. One chance. One chance, I beg of you, that I... that I may henceforth honor Christmas in my heart and try to keep it all the year. I... I will live in the past, the present, and the future. The spirits of all three shall strive within me. I... I will not shut out the lessons that they teach. One chance, dear I beg of you, one chance. <laughs> Scrooge put out his hand toward the draped and hooded figure and felt the bedpost in his room. He was in his bed. The sun was shining. It was morning. He dashed out of bed and ran to the window, throwing it open. Oh, you there. Rita? Yes, yes, you. What day is today, eh? Rita? Last Christmas day, sir. Oh. Merry Christmas. Then, well then, Scrooge. The spirits had all come on the same night. Perhaps he had dreamed them. But he didn't care to take a chance. No, this was Christmas Day, and there was time to keep his promise. He would honor Christmas in his heart, and try to keep it all the year. He dressed in all haste and started on his way. He sang with the caroliers, wished everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. He gave coins to the poor and bought food for the hungry. He sent a turkey to Bob Cratchit, which was larger than Tiny Tim himself. He bought out the stores of everything good to eat and presented himself at his nephew's home to celebrate a Christmas dinner. And Scrooge's good deeds did not stop at the end of Christmas Day. No, no, no. No, he gave Bob Cratchit a raise in salary and took the welfare of Tiny Tim into his own hands. Through his efforts, the little crippled boy did not die. No, no, he lived to be as well as you and I. Scrooge became as good a friend, as good an employer, as had ever been seen in any city or town in this good old world. Some people laughed to see the alteration in him, but he little heeded them, for he was wise enough to know that nothing ever happened on this globe for good at which some people did not have their full of laughter. No, no, and it was always said of him that he, he knew how to keep Christmas well. If any man alive possessed that knowledge, oh, may that, may that be truly a said of all of us. And so, as Tiny Tim observed, God bless us, every you one. And a Merry Christmas to you all. the curtain comes down on the final act of Dickens' A Christmas Carol. This week's Stars Over Hollywood show presented by Carnation Evaporated Milk and starring the distinguished actor Edmund Gwen. In just a moment, we'll have news about next week's show. Meanwhile, how about a curtain call, Mr. Gwen? Well, that'll be fine, all. It's a great pleasure, you know, to me to come back, play Dickens and Scrooge. We're pleased to hear that, Mr. Gwen. <laughs> this is becoming something of an annual Christmas custom for Carnation. And for our part, let me say that you've added another triumphant performance to your long list of successes. Mm. We sincerely hope that you can be with us again next year to star in A Christmas Carol. Well, I shall look forward to that, Art. Well, Mr. Gwen, after your heartwarming performance today, our after-the-show ritual of a cup of coffee with our star is all the more appropriate. Mm. So let me offer you this one. Cream to perfection with carnation evaporated milk. Oh, thanks. That's very thoughtful of you. We'll toast to a happy holiday season with it, eh? Fine idea. And I hope you'll find it exactly to your taste. You know, carnation is an important factor in making good coffee taste better than ever. Mmm. Mmm, it is very good art, yeah. And I'd like to add that it's also very good in, uh, <clears throat> tea. Yes, Mr. Gwynn. In tea, coffee, and in cocoa, too. Creamy carnation evaporated milk does wonders for flavor and aroma. Carnation, you see, is more than double rich. It has the consistency of cream. And like cream, it's heavy enough to whip. Yet carnation costs less than half as much as cream. Carnation belongs in your home. Carnation evaporated milk. The milk that whips. And now, Mr. Gwen, in appreciation of your excellent performance, we have this beautiful bouquet for your home. Oh. Red and white carnations, just like those pictured on every can of carnation evaporated milk. Oh, thanks very, very much. Merry Christmas to everyone. Goodbye for now. And a very Merry Christmas to you, Mr. Gwen. Thanks again, Art. Uh, thanks. Next Saturday, Stars Over Hollywood will present Mr. Rock Hudson in a poignant story titled Anywhere USA. And now, here's Mr. Hudson. I left Nora French feeling the way I used to as a kid. Alone, unwanted. 
There was always that loneliness. As a kid, it had been a sickness in me. And now, I felt it again. Thank you, Rock Hudson. We'll all be listening next week to hear you in this moving play. Our broadcast of Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol was adapted by Ralph Rose. Supporting Mr. Gwen were G.G. Pearson, Bill Johnstone, Victor Perrin, Eric Snowden, Raymond Lawrence, Polly Bear, and Lonnie Burr. The program was directed by Don Clark. Ladies, when you shop for groceries today, be sure you buy Carnation, the world's favorite brand of evaporated milk. No other form of milk comes in so handy, so many times, so many ways. It's Carnation time when it's coffee time. It's Carnation time when you're cooking too. It's Carnation time at baby feeding time. The milk from contented cows for you. All around the clock, it's time for Carnation. Say, mothers, if you have trouble getting your youngsters to drink enough milk, just listen to this. Wonderful tasting Carnation malted milk gives more energy value than plain milk and it's richer in minerals and the important vitamins B and D. You can serve delicious carnation malted milk either piping hot or ice cold. Kids go for it on sight either way. Get carnation malted milk today. And now for the Carnation Company and Stars Over Hollywood... This is Art Ballinger, suggesting that you be sure to see the George Burns and Gracie Allen television show brought to you by Carnation Evaporated Milk. Tune in every Saturday and hear the world's greatest motion picture stars on Stars Over Hollywood. Next Saturday, we're proud to present Rock Hudson in Anywhere USA. Stay tuned now to hear Fun for All, which follows immediately over most of these stations. Stars Over Hollywood comes to you transcribed from our Hollywood studios and is heard in Canada over the Dominion Network of the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. This is the CBS Radio Network.